Hey, this is Zach Howden, episode number five of the Speed for Your Mind podcast. With me today, we have Ryan Nozak. He's Associate Director of Sports Performance at DePaul University, trains a numerous amount of teams. Um, Ryan, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, sir. So I am the Assistant Director here at DePaul. I work with um, all track and field, cross country, women's soccer, men's golf, and then I'm an assistant for men's basketball. Uh, I got my start in strength and conditioning. Actually, I'd probably have to attribute it back to age 14. I started working at a, at a, na- uh, a nearby gym called the Spectrum and I um, started training really early on and ended up just kind of falling in love for, with training. As many strength coaches say, they, they caught the training bug. Um, took that with me throughout my high school years. You know, Growing up, I was pretty much like a stereotypical fat kid. I found training, completely changed my life. And then I went on to uh, basically start loving training. I discovered strength and conditioning in about freshman year in college. Started volunteering at Penn State uh, so that I became an intern at Penn State for two years, working with 16 out of 32 sports there. Then I went on to become a grad assistant at Tennessee State University. Uh, Did an internship at Vanderbilt. Went on to be an assistant at Robert Morris University in Pittsburgh. Um, then I was an assistant at UNC Charlotte, and now here I am at the Paul. There you go, all over the place. Yes, all sir. All over the place. Um, so, like, like you said, you've you've had numerous different positions, and you know, trained numerous amount of sports. You've you've worked at you know several different schools. So, can you can you tell the viewers, tell the audience, because there there are coaches that have stayed at one place for twenty five years. You know, there's coaches that have you know that have just started and. You know they're they're trying to figure out the way. Can you tell, you know, can you tell the, the the audience, you know, what it's like to work with different programs and work at different schools and under different people and developing your program around, you know, what you have what you've been around. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the the best part about that, and you know, I wouldn't trade my experiences for anything because I think everywhere I've been have allowed me to become a better strength and conditioning coach. After every stop, I've pulled numerous experiences. Uh, most of the time, it's ex- you know it's learning about what you want to do, and sometimes it's just also learning what not what you don't want to do. There's not necessarily anything wrong with that, but I think you know you you learn about each situation. Um, if I mention Penn State here, I have to mention working under Cam Davidson and Craig Fitzgerald. Cam was really my first mentor at that time, a uh, guy who gave me my first chance in the field at 20 years old. Um, Learned a lot from him in terms of programming, how to run a team. He, you know, I wasn't just an intern for him standing around a corner um, cleaning and, and holding a clipboard, but I actually got to coach. And he really threw me into the fire. That was, the, that was possibly the best thing I learned from him. Um, he had me do like weekly quizzes for Olympic lifting technique, for plyometrics, um, writing sample programs. So I felt like I was doing everything a normal strength coach would do at, at age 20. That was one of the best things that could have happened to me. Uh, Craig Fitzgerald with Penn State football. If anybody out there knows about Fitz, I mean, one of his mantras is hair on fire. And he's a guy that as soon as you come into that weight room, it's electric, right? So with him, learned all about setting the environment, how to you know, bring your best self to coaching. No matter what was going on in the outside world, when we walked into the weight room walls, it was all about coaching and making our athletes better. Um, talk about Robert Morris University, Todd Hammer. Uh, Todd Hammer, I would definitely attribute things like diversifying myself. And when I speak of that, I don't just mean the strength and conditioning setting, but in all of life's, life itself. Hammer is really big into his coaches going out and being more than just strength coaches. So don't be the stereotypical strength coach that, that just sits in the weight room all day and just lifts weights. Uh, read books that don't involve training. Have conversations with your coaches that aren't just about training. Uh, make sure you get out to different events on campus. One thing he had us do every year was was work the, the athlete or work the student move-in. So getting out and showing our faces on campus. Um, and now most recently with UNC Charlotte and here at DePaul, uh, Jimmy Duba, who's been one of my mentors now in, in most recent years, uh, he's a guy that's really helping me kind of dive into the monitoring side of things. At the Paul here, it's a special situation because we work with we work very closely with sports medicine. Um, 
recently in the past year now have been doing work with force plates. So tying our force plates in with what strength and conditioning is doing, what sports medicine is doing with return to play has been a, definitely a new challenge for me in my four weeks here. But when I have people like that in my career that I can count on, that only allows me to, to do a great job when I, when I walk into a situation like this. Yeah, for sure. I think it's also, it's also so interesting when you actually have the time and you have um, the ability to be able to start putting stuff into your program you know, you know, along the lines of monitoring and, and looking at some of the things that you've never really looked at before as a coach. Uh, you know, so as, you, as you've kind of, you, as you've progressed and as you've taken, you know, this job and that job and that job, you know, how do you see yourself now fitting into staffs versus, you know, how you did two, three years ago? Yeah, absolutely. And, I, you know, I think about that and um, one comparison I would make is maybe when at Robert Morris. Robert Morris, you know, we, we trained our athletes hard. We had a great strength and conditioning uh, program design, whatever it might be, culture in the weight room. But obviously, when when it comes to budgeting, we didn't really have much of a uh, anything to do with with monitoring. So at that time, I would go to different conferences and I would hear these talks on the different athlete tracking systems out there. And in my head, I'd be like, "Well, this is something I, I I'm not going to do in you know in a year from now at Robert Morris, whatever it might be." And then lo and behold, I end up at Charlotte. And while at Charlotte, I got involved with first beat so heart rate monitoring I did real-time heart rate monitoring for women's basketball and then we also did heart rate variability so I think in a very short amount of time for me I went from not having any any experience with with technology or athlete monitoring to, to walking right into a situation at Charlotte where I started running this for our team uh, and then now here at the Paul where this is something that they've been doing for a long time and I'm expected to be, you know, pretty caught up with it, and uh, hopefully be one of the leads here in, in the force plate research. Uh, but I don't think all that would be possible if I wasn't able to get my feet wet with other sources, uh, mainly things like doing the heart rate stuff at Charlotte, uh, having experience with session RPE before. So, you know, I think it's as simple as coming down to asking our athletes questions. If you want to call it, that is monitoring, right? Right. Uh, but I think everything else along that way is just maybe a more complicated form of that. Oh, absolutely. You know, so you've kind of already touched on a couple of these things, but you know, you've worked for four different, you know, four or five different coaches, right? And worked and worked within their program. Yes, sir. I mean, I I, I worked at six schools now, but I would say that those uh, four gentlemen I mentioned were probably my my four biggest mentors I've had along the way. Right. So. You know, like I said, you touched on a couple of things within this question, but if you could like pick out, you know, one or two different things from each coach that you that you've picked up, you know, that you that you've taken with you, because I think that, you know, all of us, all of us on a regular basis, okay, when we work we're working for somebody or with somebody, we say, huh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I would do it like that, you know, but I really like this, or I really yep. like that. Uh, one, can you talk about you know you know what you've picked up along the way? But two, your process in terms of like you know defining you know what you want to do versus what they do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I think about uh, Todd Hammer, I think about one of his quotes that he used to say to us all the time, and that would be, "Be the thermostat, not the thermometer." So okay. when you walk into the weight room for that day, you're controlling that temperature. You're not letting anything else dictate what you're about to do. And I think that's one of the greatest lessons we can take with us as young strength coaches, you know, especially for somebody, I'm going to use myself as, as an example here, I just moved across the country to take a new job. And when you do it, when you do something like that, you're going to have a lot of different life stresses. You know, I spent the last, I spent the last two weeks living on my friend's floor, right? I didn't have a place to live. I don't know anything about the city here. Mm -hmm. Now, am I going to walk into the weight room and I'm, am I going to let my other outside stresses stressors determine how I'm going to coach my athletes for that day or how I'm approaching the day? Absolutely not. You know, I'm going to come in there no matter what else is going on. I'm going to set that set that uh, temperature to be how I want it to be, right. no matter what else is going on. Uh, I think that's really important for us to know. Um, along the lines of programming, one thing that I, I always think about with Cam Davidson was he would use an example of training one of his Olympic shot putters. And when going about programming for him, he would always ask him the question, when I lift blank, 
I throw best. And one of those examples for him was basically when I do this exercise, I think for him it was the snatch, he said that he threw best. So when Cam was getting ready to peak him for a meet or whatever it might have been, he made sure that snatch was the pinnacle of that program. Right. And I think that's really important to be able to have the, to understand that and have those those conversations with our athletes. Realizing sometimes it's not about us, right? right. We, it's not about us being married to those exercises, but see what that athlete likes or what, what allows them to feel best. And then when the time matters the most for that athlete, it was Olympic level of competition, we're gonna program those athletes or we're gonna program those exercises that make that athlete feel the best. Well, those are those are two great examples, man. Two great examples. I, can you say that one more time so everybody can hear about the? You said it was, you know, Coach Hammer. He said it's the thermostat. Say, say that one more time. Yeah, yeah. So it's be the thermostat, not the thermometer. Yeah, I think that is that's awesome. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. I think that I think that so many people, so many coaches, not even just coaches, just people. I mean, they they control what they can control. They get in. They you know you go to work every day. Control what you can control, and the one thing you control is. How you're going to control the room? How you're going to, you know, portray yourself on a daily basis? I think that's great. Um, you know, last question for you, and for coaches that are making that transition, the one you talked about. You know, you are, um, you know, you are driving across the country. You need to start work on Monday, and I've, I've done it. You've done it, right? And it's tough. You know, it's tough to make that transition. You know, what do you? What are some advice that you have for those coaches, for those people that are going to go through that very similar situation? Yeah, absolutely, man. That's a great question, and I think it's one that we're all going to face at some point in our in our strength and conditioning career. Um, and the things that that I look at that have mattered to me the most and have actually helped me out the most is number one, when I take that new position, I focus on putting the athlete first. So, with me here coming to a new position where the athletes had a, had a I had a great relationship with the previous strength coach. I made sure that I let them know that I wanted to get to know them as best as possible. So anytime our athletes were here in the summer, when I when I first came, I tried to be in the weight room for them when they were training. I, I've been going out to all of our women's, women's soccer practices now. I warm up the girls before every practice. But pretty much just trying to insert myself into their culture as much as possible. Whether that's as simple as a role as, as showing my face at practice, um, I'm just try, you know, trying to have a regular conversation with, with the athletes. I think that's really important because you've got to, you, number one, you have to show them that you care. Um, I think number two is something that's helped me out along the way in both of my previous two jobs have been reaching out to the strength coach in my position before me. Right. So here at DePaul, I've been lucky enough to have a previous friendship with Nick Higgins, uh, who was in my position here before, um, and former director of DePaul, John Waggle. Two guys that have helped me out a lot along the way, and then again now with my boss here, Jimmy Duba. He was he was in my position about three years ago here at DePaul. Um, having those three guys to lean upon, um, just learning about what's you know how to do it the DePaul way, what's worked for them in the past, what are, what are some things that the sport coaches liked here, what are some things that the athletes liked here, what are some things that you guys liked that hey you know at the time this seemed dumb I wouldn't try it again. And that's all stuff that I try to write down, and I, I kind of add it to my repertoire. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think those two things alone are are probably the biggest things that that any coach can do. Yeah, well, those are two great pieces of advice, man. Well, I want to appreciate you for coming on the show. Uh, if you have not, you know, the audience out there, the viewers, if you have not followed Ryan on all the social media outlets, please do. Uh, he puts out great content on a regular basis. Thanks, Ryan, for being on the show. Thanks, man. Uh, glad to be on here. Thanks for having me.